Kirk Cousins has always been regarded as good, but never a top-tier quarterback in the NFL. He'll have a fantastic regular season, and then follow it up by wetting the bed in the playoffs. It doesn't stop there, as similar to Andy Dalton, I should know all too well, when the lights shine brightest, Kirk O'Chains rarely ever delivered. Still, you could do worse than Kirk Cousins, as the Falcons believe he is the guy who can take them to their first Super Bowl in franchise history. At age 36 and coming off of a catastrophic injury, and if not, they still have a 24-year-old rookie looming who may usurp the throne. Given the up and down, but mostly up career of Cousins, I wanted to take a deep dive into his career just to see how good Kirk Cousins was or is you know this guy this is the first guy I'm doing that is actually active as I'm talking about him so I don't know what to call this but I'm just gonna say how good is Kirk Cousins I don't know I'll figure it out in the title for real for real from being an afterthought in the 2012 draft to his you like that quote you like that you like that to becoming Kirko Thuggins one thing is for sure the man is king at least his agent is anyway, at raking in the bank. He'd also make you laugh unintentionally from time to time. So with that, we will take a deep dive to see how good Kirk Cousins was or is. Again, I'm still trying to figure that out. But before we get going, I'm not sure if you guys may or may have not noticed, but um, for the last few videos, I have been saying we're on the road to 2,000 subs and we have crushed that honestly almost about a month ago I pre-recorded a few videos in preparation to go on vacation and also when I came back you know if anybody feels this way you kind of get a little lazy when you come back I prepared for that with that being said I can now I guess say we're on the road to 3,000 subs so I appreciate you guys and I just want to show you guys something too hold on there we go so actually YouTube sent me this uh, a few weeks back um, just to kind of say thank you, I think I got to reread the the card that they gave me. This doesn't happen without you guys, so thank you guys so much for your support. One of these days, maybe who knows, we'll get a little uh, silver, or gold, platinum uh, plate button, you know. But uh, one step at a time, right? Let's go ahead and talk about Kirk Cousins, though. Kirk Cousins was born in Barrington, Illinois, about an hour outside of Chicago on August 19th, 1988. So, happy belated, Kirko. Cousins wasn't a highly rated quarterback going into college, only being a three-star recruit per Rivals.com. Cousins would commit eventually to Michigan State. And from 2018 to 2011, Kirk would become a divisional champion in 2011 and a conference champion back in 2010, which would lead the Spartans to share the Big Ten Championship. Whatever that means, again, I don't really watch too much college. Throughout his time in college, Cousins would amass 66 touchdowns to 30 interceptions and over 9,000 passing yards, earning a Lowe's Senior Class Award for football in 2011 in the process. These accolades, along with a decent NFL combine, would boost his stock for the upcoming 2012 draft. Let's be real, ladies and gentlemen, in the 2012 draft, no one was talking about Kirk Cousins. That honor went to the favorite to go number one, Trent Richardson. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I get a few comments here and there when I uh, try to push the Trent Richardson agenda of him going number one, and it pisses people off, and I don't know, it kind of kind of makes me laugh. But in all seriousness, uh, the talk of the town for the 2012 draft went to Andrew Luck and RG3. Cousins would be the eighth quarterback off the board when the Redskins controversially would take Kirk with their fourth round pick, which was also only their third player taken up to that point. Controversy aside, Kirk was designated to be no more than a serviceable backup to RG3. And that was the case for the first few seasons, as he only started a total of four games in 2012 and 2013 respectively. 2014 was more of the same, only filling in as needed, as the team had hopes that the struggling Griffin would return to form at some point. But it was in this season that just slowly started to see some doubt creeping in to the former Rookie of the Year. The tide wouldn't fully turn until the 2015 season. In a preseason game, RG3 would suffer a concussion and Cousins would seize the opportunity and never relinquish the starting position from this point forward. With Cousins leading the way, Washington would win five more games from their previous year with a 9-7 record. This 9-7 record included winning five of their last six games and four straight to end the season. The team's run would, however, end in the wild card versus Green Bay. Still, this was enough for the front office to commit to Captain Kirk, and Washington would subsequently give RG3 the boot 
for the 2016 season. <laughs> Cousins would follow 2015 with a Pro Bowl caliber 2016 season. His statistics included passing for over 4,900 yards, a 25 to 12 touchdown to interception ratio, and four game winning drives. A statistic that would become synonymous with him in the future. With Cousins trending up and Washington more or less trending up, you'd think they'd be ready to pay the man going forward, right? No. Cousins would be franchise tagged for the second year in a row and would have to prove himself again in 2017. With similar numbers to 2016, it apparently was not enough for Washington to commit long term and chose to go in a different direction. So during the 2018 offseason, the new man in town would agree to a three year $84 million deal that was fully guaranteed to wear the purple and gold the first ever guarantee of its kind. Cousins would not disappoint as he would throw for 30 touchdowns to just 10 interceptions, nearly 4,300 yards passing, and would guide Minnesota to an 8-7-1 record, which was a bit disappointing considering they were just 13-3 the year prior. 2019, the Vikings and Cousins would return to the playoffs after a 10-6 record and would even secure a playoff victory against the Saints, the first playoff win of Cousins' career. And on a side note, guys, has there been a team more snake bitten in the playoffs in the past decade than the New Orleans Saints? They just can't catch a break, especially when they play the Vikings. Sideline! Touchdown! Unbelievable! Saints catching a stray aside, their run would end at the hands of the 49ers in the divisional round. And in both games, Cousins did look okay, but it was nothing like what he did in the regular season. 2020 and 2021 were relatively quiet but solid seasons. The only thing that really stood out here was that Cousins would sign another extension, this time for two years and $66 million. Then the Vikings went on one of the most improbable runs that you've ever seen in 2022. This is the season where Kirko Chains was born, as Cousins and the Vikings would amass an uncanny eight game winning drives this season that would result in the Vikings having a 13 and four record. Cousins would earn his fourth Pro Bowl nod and would compile 29 touchdowns and over 4,500 yards to go with those eight aforementioned game winning drives. While this team was fun to watch, no one took them serious as there were way too many close games in their wins and way too many blowouts in the few losses. Doubters were proven right as Minnesota would lose to the Daniel Jones led Giants in the wild card round. And unfortunately from there, in this past season 2023, Cousins would suffer a torn Achilles midway through, which was too bad because he was on pace to have his best season yet. And I should know, he was my quarterback in fantasy. Ooh. With that torn Achilles and him getting up there in age, the Vikings decided to go in a new direction and let Cousins walk, thus beginning the JJ McCarthy era. Ooh. Thus beginning the Sam Darnold era for at least the 2024 season. Which now brings us to the now, where Cousins would hit the jackpot yet again, as the Falcons seem to be in a win now phase, signing him to a four year $180 million deal that will carry him to his age 40 season. But the start in Atlanta has been anything but smooth as the Falcons controversially would draft Michael Penix Jr. with their first round pick, a move that Cousins nor his team had any idea was coming. We'll see how this all plays out, but my money's on Cousins not finishing his deal by the time it's supposed to expire. So now that we've gone over the man's career as a whole, I wanted to re-ask the question, just how good was he is he? Given all the accolades, the four-time Pro Bowler, I believe, doesn't get respected as much as he should. I can understand it though, as many people will look into what you did in January to see if you deserve to be mentioned among the greats. Cousins playoff record leaves something to be desired. Playing in only 4 games, he has a 5 touchdown to just 1 interception ratio, a 66 completion percentage, and a slightly underwhelming 209 yards per game. Most glaring of all is his 1-3 and three record. These are numbers of a solid game managing quarterback, something that doesn't usually get you far in the playoffs. The problem though is that Kirk was always better in the regular season than he was in the playoff games. Entering his age 36 season, Cousins currently has 270 touchdowns, which is 20th all time, nearly 40,000 passing yards, 24th ranked all time, 
and an outstanding career passer rating with 98.2, eighth all time. But again, people always remember what you did in the playoffs. And on a brighter note though, you have to commend the guy who bet on himself and was patiently waiting for his opportunity. He never bashed RG3, never complained that he wasn't immediately considered for the starting position. It's also not easy when you see fellow 2012 draftees Luck, Tannehill, Russell Wilson, hell even Brandon Whedon getting an opportunity much quicker than you did. It almost builds a chip on your shoulder that a lot of guys can use as fire. That patience paid off in a big way though, as Cousins has had a career that many could only wish for. Throughout his career, Cousins has earned a whopping $294 million, which is sixth all time. A glaring statistic when you consider the guys in front of him all either have an MVP, a Super Bowl ring, or a combination of both. If anything, Cousins' agent should get a career of an A+. But as for the career of Kirkomania, I will have to give him a B+++. What? But what do you guys think? What would you guys give Kirk Cousins? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if I missed anything. I do take the time to read your comments. And also, let me know who you guys want me to cover next. Uh, this is a shout out to my editor, Robbie. He is a huge fan of Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. So this first one that I did based off of a recommendation goes to my editor. With that being said, this has been Triple DS. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. But until next time, shoop boy!